So Nisha, favourite Queen song? It's got to be Bohemian Rhapsody. Fuck yeah. Don't play a clip though, because we want to make money on this video. According to people who knew him best, when he was out of the spotlight, Freddie Mercury was a quiet, shy individual who was fiercely protective of his privacy, which stood in stark contrast to his wildly flamboyant stage persona. But just because Freddie Mercury liked to keep things on the down low, it didn't mean that he didn't know how to party like a motherfucker when it really counted. Alright, so I'm guessing that Freddie Mercury, one of the most famous rock stars of all time, yeah. liked to enjoy the party lifestyle. Oh yeah, and while Freddie Mercury was self-admittedly a very shy, quiet person, um, he did on occasion just like, you know, put himself out there a little bit. For example, on his 41st birthday, he threw a party for himself when he invited 700 of his closest friends to a hotel in Ibiza and almost tore it to the fucking ground. <laughs> and the story goes that Freddie Mercury and his guest drank so much alcohol and caused so much damage to the hotel that the owner of it genuinely wondered if Freddie Mercury would be able to pay the bill the next day. And keep in mind, Freddie Mercury was a multi-millionaire rock star. That probably hints about how much stuff they got through on that night. But yeah, it sounds like an absolute nightmare for the hotel staff that had to put up with that party. Yeah, it sounds like a sick party for the people who attended it, but uh, kind of paints Freddie in a bad light when it's like, oh yeah, they drank all the alcohol and destroyed the place. Like the, that, the poor staff who had to deal with that. So she points out that Freddie Mercury, ever the gracious host and nice guy that he was, um, went out of his way to ensure that all staff working the event got shit-faced after the fact. So yeah, uh, it was a massive ball ache to deal with, but Freddie Mercury went out of his way to ensure that every person who helped make the night a success was rewarded for it very handsomely, because that's just the kind of dude Freddie was. So are there any other funny stories that happened at this party? Well, yeah, there was um, a six foot cake uh, made for Freddie that had the lyrics to his favorite song, Scroll on top of it, that was served to all the guests by topless flamenco dancers. So, you know, that's, a, that's a very Freddie Mercury thing to do, isn't it? So you can't just have the giant cake, it's got to be served by topless buff men. And as an aside, people who attended that party have gone on record as saying it is arguably the best and most extravagant party ever thrown on that entire island. And keep in mind, Americans, that Ibiza is the party capital of Europe. Like, Ibiza is just, it's synonymous with just massive extravagant parties, isn't it? Yeah, that is quite an achievement. Like, isn't that where, like, the Inbetweeners movie's set? Is it Ibiza that's set, or is it Lanzarote? Oh, God, I can't remember. Because there's a couple of places where, like, British people stereotypically go to just get fucking mortal. And it's, it's Ibiza, it's Lanzarote, and it's Benny Dorm. Oh, God, Benny Dorm. <laughs> and, which of, and which of those to you, Nisha, is, like, the most, um, uh, like, British? It, it's got to be Benny Dorm, hasn't it? Yeah, definitely Benny and, Dorm. And if people are wondering, like, why is Benny Dorm? I consider to be so British. It's in fucking Spain, right? It's like, go watch the TV show Benny Dorm, which, despite being a comedy, is, I argue, the most accurate representation of British people in any piece of media ever. Yeah. Because have you seen Benny Dorm at all? Yeah, actually, me and Adam binge watched it recently. The, the show is really good, but like the people in it, like they are British. Like, is it Steve Pemberton, like the main dad? Yeah. And he's just like the little pot-bellied guy. He's going a little bit bald. He wears the football shirts. He's got the tan. You stick to your guns, Tal. Thanks, Dad. I think you should call the next one Doddy after Ken Dodd. Don't be stupid. Well, you freaking started it. He's like, oh, it's so accurate. And then you've got Madge. Yeah. <laughs> Madge with the cigarettes. Who we all say looks like my mum and she really hates when I say that. Because <laughs> she's got the tan and the blonde hair and she's constantly smoking. Yeah, she's on the motorised scooter as well because she's so lazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry, mum. I know you watch these videos, but it's true. I think my all-time favourite character has to be Kenneth, who owns a salon, mainly because they, they don't do anything. They never open. And yeah. And then he wears the hot pants as well. Oh, it's fucking great. Oh, I ain't been stuck in here. I miss all the fun. A girl nearly drowned, Kenneth. But did you or did you not agree that you were going to come out tonight and try and have some fun? Yes, but I did Good. I think, though, the most on-point thing about that show is the karaoke bar, where people just go sing shit karaoke and eat chips and sausages. <laughs> It's like, it's so, it's so accurate. It's like, it's surgical precision on like, just like capturing the essence of what Britain is. And before we 
move on. I just want to give a big shout out to Benny Dom for having what I think might be one of um, just the most respectful portrayals of something that another lesser show would make fun of, and that's the character of Les. Oh yeah, Les. And if people are wondering what we're talking about, there is a character in that show called Les who occasionally dresses like a woman. And when I first saw this character introduced, I remember just going, oh, for fuck's sake, like what awful offensive jokes are they going to make at the expense of this character? And they never do, ever. In fact, they have an episode where like, they hire Les to work for the hotel and the manageress says, uh, this is Les, uh, occasionally he feels like dressing like a woman. At that point, he's fine to do that. And when he's in costume as Leslie, every single character refers to him as Leslie. Oh yeah, Les is a transvestite. I said he can come to work dressed as Leslie any time he wants. Ha 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 ha, very funny. Uh, because they just, oh yeah, it's what he wants to be called. Oh, it's what she wants to be called when he's in costume. Let's just call him that. And like, wow. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's that easy, it's that easy not to make fun of people for their choices. It's like, holy shit. And he's in a show called Benny Dorm. So if we bring it back to Freddie Mercury and his party yes. lifestyle, that party you mentioned earlier sounded pretty amazing. It was, and by all accounts, Freddie Mercury was just like absolutely on it that night. And he was just a social butterfly. He interacted with everybody, he was just, like, that people had never seen him so animated and alive, which is um, quite impressive when you realise that just a few months earlier, Freddie Mercury had found out that he had AIDS and was dying. So he was being ravaged by a disease he'd personally see kill some of his closest friends. And he was partying like an absolute don. And he threw his massive strong party for all of his friends. He could not give less of a fuck. It's like, nah, man, it's my birthday. I want to feel fabulous. It's like, you, you go, Freddie. You fucking do it. Yeah, I can imagine, like... Even as a younger man, Freddie would have thrown wilder parties. Oh, he did. And um, we briefly touched upon in another video about him that, yeah, he would just have drugs just around. Just like you turn up to a Freddie Mercury party, oh, here's the drugs. Just here's the, the big pile of, literal pile of cocaine on a table. And at some Jesus. of his parties, he found that his guests um, didn't like looking for the drugs. So what he would do is he would hire little people, put silver platters on their head, and then put a pile of cocaine on that platter. What? <laughs> And they would just walk around the party, and it's like, oh, would you like some cocaine, sir? And it's on my head. Jesus. That's the thing he did. I'm not condoning drug use, but that's pretty fucking baller. As it's a fact for you video, I'm sure there are more party stories to be told. Well, there is, yes. And my favourite one is that Freddie Mercury was a staple of the London gay um, club scene, um, to such an extent that he reportedly, and this is, this is a rumour, uh, so it can neither be confirmed nor denied, but took Princess Diana out for a night on the town. Oh wow, I hope that's By dressing true. her up in drag and taking to all these like super seedy gay nightclubs where she got her absolute dance on when she was married to the guy next in line to sit on the throne. So, or to put it another way, Freddie Mercury was so fucking boss and baller that he went to a gay nightclub with a literal princess. And there's like um, many, many stories about Freddie Mercury's legendary sexual prowess and it's reported that he could have sex with a dozen different partners over the course of a single evening. Uh, there are stories about him refreshing himself between songs on stage by walking off stage and having sex with one of his many lovers and then walking back on stage to do an encore. The article for today's video is about how Freddie Mercury gives zero fucks. So have yes. you got any stories about that? Yeah, like throwing massive parties and just taking copious amounts of drugs. That's standard rock star behaviour. But I think the story that encapsulates how few fucks Freddie Mercury gave comes from basically the end of his life when he was next to bedridden and he was recording a song. And the story goes that people came in, looked and saw Freddie. It's like, he looks unwell. We don't think he's strong enough to stand up, let alone sing on this track. And Freddie, in response, said, nah, poured himself a massive shot of vodka, downed it in one, and said, I'll fucking do it, darling. Went in and did it in one take. That sounds ridiculous. It does, doesn't it? Like, even having almost every single one of his organs fail at once couldn't stop Freddie Mercury from finishing a fucking song. Like, holy shit, like, what a badass. You can't, you can't stop it. And even on his literal deathbed, Freddie Mercury didn't stop being like a stone pimp badass. Uh, because 
literally one of the final things he ever said to anybody. Uh, he was being asked, like, Freddy, you're close to death. I, I, you're going to be gone soon. Do you have any requests for what you'd like us to do about your legacy, about your image? And the only thing Freddy said in response was, never make me boring. Which I don't think you could do when you like these stories like that floating around. What a fucking hero. So, Carl, I'm pretty sure you've talked about Freddie Mercury in a video before. Uh, we have, yes, when we were discussing um, the biopic that was planned about Freddie Mercury that was in development hell for a couple of years. And originally, it was going to be a R-rated movie talking about all the cool shit we've discussed today and more, starring, I shit you not, Sasha Baron Cohen. <laughs> oh, really? So, it, yeah, he was going to have Sasha Baron Cohen in it. And the story goes that... Sasha Baron Cohen was approached by a member of the band, he refused to name, who told him, do you know the best thing about this biopic about Freddie Mercury is the thing that happens in the middle? To which Sasha Baron Cohen responded, what do you mean what happens in the middle? To which the band member responded, oh, that's when Freddie dies, and we get to see how the band carried on without him. Oh, really? And Cohen was so disgusted by that comment, he left the project. Uh, reportedly quoting as he did, nobody's going to watch a movie where the main character dies of AIDS halfway through. It's pretty bad. Uh, by all accounts, the movie they ended up making with uh, Rami Malek was passable. Like a 6, 7 out of 10. Uh, nothing to write home about. And it kind of whitewashed some of the more flamboyant and extravagant um, elements of Freddy's life. And I like to compare that to Rocket Man, which is the biopic about Elton John's life which is positively not PG-13. And there's a great quote from Elton John when he was asked about, oh, so why isn't the movie PG-13? Why is it R-rated? To which Elton John responded, I didn't lead a PG-13 life. Fair enough. <laughs> it's, it's like, oh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Like, it's not true to what the, my story. It's like, oh, wow, good on you, Elton John. And you compare it to the Queen one, where like, they downplayed Freddie being gay. And they didn't want to like talk about the fact he threw his massive extravagant parties. It made the band look bad. It's like, no, he doesn't. He makes Freddie look like a fucking hero. Why would you not want to celebrate his life? <laughs> What's going on? You know if you're on time. I'm a performer, darling, not a Swiss train conductor. We don't want to see a boring fucking movie about how he started a band. I want to see a movie about this legend, this hero. This is like walking, just God man. It's great. Like, I watched that film when it first came out and I don't really remember anything about his party lifestyle. No, it's more about the band, which, yeah, I guess it's something people want, but it's not what I wanted, because I'm not a fan of Queen as much as I'm a fan of Freddie Mercury, the person. It reminds me a little bit of the film The Dirt, which is by no means, like, a fantastic movie, but at least it's honest about what the band were like back then, where they're portrayed as being huge fucking pricks. And like they just had this crazy wild party lifestyle. So yeah, because that's what they were as like as a band back then. Because they were Motley Crue. So sorry, man. What happened? And it feels more true to life because there's that element of grit to it. And it's not safe. Like they didn't make a safe movie about it. And I think that's the number one problem I had with the Queen biopic, which I don't even remember the fucking name of. Is it We Will Rock You? It's Bohemian Rhapsody. Bohemian Rhapsody, sorry, I don't even remember the fucking name. Because it was so safe and it didn't have, it didn't delve into the more interesting aspects of the things that happened. And like, where something like The Dirt, like, it's not a great movie, but at the very least you can talk about, oh yeah, was that scene where Ozzy Osbourne snorts ants. Oh God, Which yeah. is a real thing he did back in the 80s. It's like, wait, what? Yeah, and I want to see that movie. That's great, because also my friend told me. He went, oh yeah, there's a scene where Ozzy's in it and he snorts piss. I'm like, what, what? Everybody else has a drink. And I would have loved to see a movie about Freddie Mercury's life that touched on the crazier bullshit he did, just because it would have been more interesting to see as a viewer and as a fan of his work.